Welcome to Marin Poets Live. I'm Neshama Franklin. I work at the Fairfax Library and I love poetry. After this program airs on Marin TV, it will appear on the Marin County Free Library website as a part of a digital archive which also features biographies of the poets and links to our collection. For this month's program, we will feature Andy Plum, a.k.a. Selena Ann. Welcome, Andy. Here we are. Glad to be here. Good. So let us ground us in Marin, if you have a Marin poem for us. I actually I, don't have a Marin Okay, poem. <laughs> then give us what you done got. Okay, okay. break the mold. It's fine with me. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm going to start out with a, I call a magic realist version of my growing up All of right. my family. So it's partly truth and partly, as I call it, friction. <laughs> and it's called Seven Bubbles. My grandfather was a high priest, a conjurer, a man who, who denied his own existence. He never played with guns until he shot himself, when no one was looking. I was 11 years in the making, slowly brought to fruition, pale of skin, almost colorless. My father did not know what to do with me. He would stare me down in the middle of the night. I learned to look away, or perhaps I was looking right at him. I took to tears easily and threw tantrums even when I was happy. I once stood on my head for three days, two hours, and 27 minutes. My parents took me to a shrink who was also a gymnast. I spoke upside down to him. He nodded his head and tapped his feet and cartwheeled across the room, but I don't think he really understood. My other grandfather was a Civil War general, or maybe it was the Spanish-American War. He spoke in anagrams and wove intricate tapestries he gave to the needy. He, he died late in life of a, of a variety of sketchy illnesses. I was told he never laughed. Neither did he sigh much. He was actually a lawyer. But where is the poetry in that? There are no dancers in my family, alas, nor circus acrobats. But I'm pretty sure there were sailors going way back, and perhaps a pirate or two and definitely a damsel in distress. My parents met on a foggy, foggy day. From then on, they never saw each other clearly. Still, they married and had children, one, two, three, and four. One was a boy with a great hook shot. Two was also a boy who could run and run and run. Three was me. And four was a girl who got lost in the shuffle. We settled in a ramshackle bungalow on Park Avenue. No, wait, that's some other family's tall tale. I began to grow wings at the age of seven, but I refused to learn to fly. Kids would taunt me and tease me, saying, fly, angel boy, fly. They once dragged me to the edge of a cliff, cliff and flung me over. I just rolled up into a ball and spun downward, multiplying numbers in my head to dull the pain. When I landed on the ground, I tossed my wings aside and skipped backwards all the way home. One summer's day, sick with fever and crows battering my brain, I discovered something inexplic inexplicably enticing. It fell upon my shoulders, down my chest and torso. I began speaking in tongues, became a true believer. My mother found telltale, telltale signs one Christmas Eve. On that most silent of nights, she raised her voice and demanded answers. I took the fifth, not knowing what I was doing, how could I explain it? She brought in the doctors and the experts and even a shaman or two. They examined me up, they examined me down, they tested my brain waves, they locked me in a closet filled with suits and ties. They made me watch westerns and war movies, morning, noon, and night. And when the tumult, tumult and the shouting and the misguided attempts to brand me with normalcy died down, I gathered up my tears and danced once again into a sweet and mysterious feminine underworld. Wow, that's an epic poem. It is. I like it. It's one of my few epic ones. I have yes, two. <laughs> yes. So, um, you want to tell me a little about the Ramshackle Park Avenue, <laughs> whatever? Well, my mother actually came from, was brought up in New York City part of her life uh -huh. to a fairly well-to-do family that kind of 
during the Depression, kind of everything fell apart, and her father, my grandfather on her side, did commit suicide. Yes. Um, when she was 12 and I was not yet born. Oh. And so I always see myself as having this part of me, has this kind of New York. My dad was upstate New York or Rochester, New York, mm -hmm. and my mother was more New York City. And so there's a lot of East Coast, I think, somewhere yeah. in me. And her story's real interesting, but it's also pretty sad, too. And it deals with a lot of, of, of having, seemingly having money, but a lot of it was family money, and a lot of it was, was kind of fading away. Mm -hmm. And um, Do you have a poem for her in there? What? Do you have a poem for her in there, or of her, or by her, or is this her appearance in your poetry? My mother? Or? Yes, your mother. Um, I'm not sure what else there is. Uh, she's definitely part of... of, of of everything, in a oh, sense. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I have my father a poem, actually, which okay. is interesting, um, because I didn't know him very well, and he, and he was, oh. it was a, definitely a distance going on there when I grew up. Right. But well, um, would you like to haul him out for us now? Actually, that's an interesting poem. Okay. Um, and it's different because it's pretty much close. Actually, it's, it's conjecturing. We took a trip across the country. Um, when I was about 11 or so, and my father didn't go. My mother took us in a Volkswagen bus, mm -hmm. three boy, two boys and one girl and me, four kids, and then a family friend on an 87-day trip oh. around the country, Whoa. and big undertaking, and my dad bowed out pretty much right away. Yes. <laughs> it was my mother's mm -hmm. see, for us to see the world, or see yes. America, you know? Right. And, uh, and I never really thought much about what what my father was doing, you know, what he would do because he was, I mean, he was used to having a family around him. And mm -hmm. so I kind of conjectured, and, he's, uh. and he was a reader, called Summer of 63. I wonder what my father thought about as he sat at our, dinner, at our dining room table, surrounded by silence for nearly three months. When he dove into our pool on a hot summer's evening, did he feel free? The kind of freedom that shoots up and down your spine and makes you want more, but the more takes you to places you can't bear to go. So you swim a few laps and dry yourself quickly and go back to reading Bellow as the darkness settles in. Mm, um, it's a great image. And, and, and he pretty much found, I don't know if he found it, he was always a reader, mm -hmm. but basically his way of escaping our interesting, chaotic, energetic family life was, mm -hmm. was to read and to read fiction. Yeah. And yeah. was that you as a kid as well? What? As a kid, was that you as well? As my brother. <laughs> what? Actually, my, I was not, I was, I guess, a little bit on the oh, hyperactive side. Oh. And, and the sense of one, I, it was hard for me sometimes to sit still. All those gymnastics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, I, and I liked running around. And, I, and so I liked it when I was able to settle down to read and, and when I found books I liked. But my dad was, was, and my mother read a lot too, but that was, her books were poetry, not poetry, they were The Nation, uh, New Yorker, mm -hmm. magazines, political stuff. Yeah. And, and they'd be reading in separate chairs and not talking to each other for hours at night. Yep. And, um, and I just had so much energy. And so, yeah. so my reading is, is off and on. And that's kind of like how my writing is. It's mm -hmm. the thing where I have my spurts and I have my times yes. and I, when I can really focus and really do what I want to do. But it helps to, to have something I want, rather than the, an assigned book, like mm -hmm. in school, you know. Oh, yeah. Usually I would try to avoid those as much as possible. <laughs> yes. Well, let's have some more poems. Uh, your life is very interesting, yeah. but we're here for poetry. Yeah. Um, here's a shorty that I really, that I really like. This is, and I'm not going to pronounce it so well because I had a, f it's the title is called Sin Subtitulo, and that will come at the end. She brought me her heart, layered like a cake. I ate and I ate and I ate, and still I was hungry. I have come to believe that love is a foreign film without subtitles. So give me that first word again, or the word in the title. Uh, it's supposed to mean without subtitles. Yes. And I actually have it, turns out I misspelled the ah. Spanish in my book. <laughs> yes. But um, essentially, I didn't want to give away the without subtitles. Mm -hmm. Some people would know it already. 
Yeah. So. Uh, okay, that's one of those that might need the eye as well as the ear. Yeah. So and, and there's actually I don't know if this, this can be seen anywhere, but there uh, there are photographs in ah. my books. Uh -huh. and this is of me. Uh huh. Uh, kind of a spontaneous picture taken by a friend of mine. Ah. Uh, and. Um, Multimedia. Yeah. Well, that's. How does it work? I'm definitely someone who likes to combine things. And, yes. And. and Poetry is not my, it's something I do, and I, and uh -huh. I, I have written a lot more the last, since I've actually been publishing, you know, uh -huh. and, and I find it, if I just, you know, just say, okay, it's time to start writing. You know? All right. Uh, so, I, you are starting writing, and we want to hear it. So, yeah. give us so, more poems. So, uh, different ones. I have these things more here. Satin tree. I'm going to read one called The Room. In a tiny hotel with only one room and a single bed that folds up into a chair, a light flickers throughout the night. People go there to forget, to forgive, to disintegrate, to reinvigorate. My story is of a woman, stressed in multiples and tired from prayer. She enlayers herself for sleep, first the anvil, then the gun. She dreams of stark blues and ransom kisses. She awakens in a house a thousand miles away. Her husband is not her husband. Her children are not her children. Her life somebody else's. She can only smile as she awaits a brand new day. Mm, dream poem, definitely. Yeah, I don't know where these come from sometimes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, that's, that's the fascination of it. Yeah. Let's have and, some more. And I really like that. It's actually... I, I, I really liked that because it did come out of, I don't know where, a mm -hmm. couple years ago. And, yeah. and it was like, I think that's a keeper. Oh, uh, yes. Well, uh, they're kept upon the page and now they'll be kept <laughs> in the airwaves. Yeah, and so, so whatever. My books are book, bootleg poems and poems mm -hmm. from Big Pink. Yes. Um, here's one, another kind of, well, we'll just read it. The Satin mm -hmm. Tree. In Siberia, there is a tree that oozes satin. Russian cross-dressers make the arduous journey there to pray and bathe in its glory. One day, a man in angelic drag cries out, There is no satin tree. It is a fake. Pay no attention to him, said a soldier in black bra and matching tap pants. His stockings have runs, his wig is in tangles, and his wings are made of cardboard. Still, he must investigate, said a government official in towering heels. He took samples of the ooze and headed back to Moscow. On his way back home, the ooze seeped out of his bag, onto the streets, underneath doorways, and into master bedrooms. Even though it was the dead of winter, a strange joy hovered over Moscow. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, since you've brought it up in a poem, this is the, the wedge to bring us Selena Ann and tell, tell us how she entered your life and does she write different poems from Andy Plum or well what's interesting is I don't ever write when I'm when I'm dressed up okay um, I'm in a different state of, of consciousness uh. or a different state of whatever uh -huh. and is it a social experience or a very just a general it's both personal? internal and also yes. it's, okay. uh, I like it best when it when it becomes social mm -hmm. um, but it's also I've done so when I was younger, it was so, so it was so solitary. It was pretty uh -huh. much, you know, my mother's clothes when I was uh -huh. a kid, and 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 there was no way I, I had any clue how to tell anybody else about that. Mm -hmm. Except for I did have a few friends who brief encounters when you're 13, you know, too oh, yeah. many days, where I kind of brought out this part of me, and it was really interesting. And mm -hmm. I go, yeah, this this is not this can't be. Uh, closet. I mean, when it, back then, I'm not even sure if they even used the word closet yet. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, this is not going to be something I'm going to hide away too easily. Ah. And uh, and and I was kind of you know when I got my mother brought me out and it's in it's kind of in my poem yes. that I read by finding things you know and putting things together and kind of going okay you know mm -hmm. and she didn't like it at the time. Now she's really cool, but it's been many years. That's great. Oh yeah, that's well, a miracle. Yeah, I must say. Well, I think it, it's, uh, she, I was her, in some ways, her, not my favorite, I was the one who, we had, you know, we talked a lot, and 
and there was a real break there when she found out and it was like, what do you talk about, you know, what do you do? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that for her, it was a matter of, uh, I was pretty adamant. I mean, I, I didn't, yeah. you know, I, I didn't know what I was going to do with Selena or pre-Selena, mm -hmm. but I knew that it was part of me. I knew right. early on. I didn't know anybody else who did it other than these friends I sort of did things with, but it was like, you know. Yeah. I yeah. love all the wings imagery because you they're behind you, but you can't really hide them. Yeah. There's certainly a lot of uh, angels in my poem. I don't even yes. know where that all comes from. Right. Uh, well, let's let's fish around some more in your uh, wild okay. subconscious and uh, see see what emerges. Okay. I'm gonna do actually one of my because this is a, a little bit of a turn, but it's one of my darker pieces. Um, Good. I, you know, I love dark. Yeah, <laughs> I think poetry to me, the or I call it poetry songs. My favorites usually are, are very sad and very, you know, and they're dealing with longing and needing and and, mm -hmm. and all that. So I I certainly have written my share yes. <laughs> of those poems. Um, and this one is on page seven. It's called Darkness, Darkness. My nerves spread across the mirrored floor. I follow the ticks, the impulses, the loose wiring. The night is moonless. The stars made of dust, the angels forgotten. God, a misprint. I am deeper into nowhere than I have ever been before. I pray for sleep, not in short gasping spurts, but infinite, sweet and tender. I gather up my father's pills, and sew them one by one by one onto my longings and desires. The next day, my mother awakens me. She tells me, about, she tells me of my father's restless night and removes his pills one by one by one from my longings and desires. Mm. Wow. Is your father still alive? My father died nine years ago. Uh -huh. My mother's still alive. Yes. And uh, so... Uh, I don't know what to say other than... Uh, right, <laughs> then, then there, uh, there they are yeah. and here it's, you are. Yeah, it's Let's... it. Um, but I spent, uh, you know, a lot of time, you know, within this world of both Selena, you know, pre-Selena, Selena. And also, I was fairly social, too, and, and it was, you know, it, I guess I was lucky to get some good feedback from people, mm -hmm. from a girlfriend who kind of discovered Selena, and, and my mother came around, not, you know, she had to deal with it, but, um, and I really feel in some ways I was kind of blessed to have this incredibly intense, you know, mother screaming at me on Christmas yeah. Eve, you know, uh, what the hell are you, what the heck are you uh -huh. doing, Andy, what is this, who are you, you know, uh -huh. and, uh, and, and I don't have to deal with the, the whole thing, a lot of she kind of blasted you out of the yeah, closet, yeah, as it were. Yeah, and, and I've kind of run with it, but again, I, I do it when I do it. It's, it's, you know, I do it, it's, it's not full-time, it's not, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, but it's, it's something I know. <laughs> right. Uh, well, m m most of us have something inside us that, we, that isn't obvious to others, but that's what poetry keeps evoking in us, is those hidden secret selves. So let's hear more hidden secret selves from okay. you. Uh, here's one about uh, this one. I, I like this one a lot. This is one of my favorites. It's called Midnight Lost, and it's based on a true story. It's actually pretty, pretty damn close to truth. <laughs> um, the Midnight Lost. She spoke of my frailties, of my fear of flowers, of my wanting nothing and needing everything, of my vanishing at the moment of orgasm. In a panic moment, I had stolen her sister's dress. I spit out excuses right and left. I told her that the cut of the dress made me half crazy. I blamed my illogical upbringing, and anyway, stealing was a lost art. She told me she was losing interest in my breath, that my eyes were prickly like stems of roses, and my touch like metal spikes piercing her skin. She ran off with a waitress who served her breakfast in red, and danced naked in the snow. I saw her once again through my rearview mirror. She looked strangely edible, like dew, like fleece, like fire. I cried three tears, 
stepped on the pedal, and sped off towards the midnight lost. Wow. Somehow I keep seeing Chagall in here. <laughs> Some, because there's all these kind of floating images around the corner that are bizarre and concrete and wonderful. I, I like that uh, comparison. I, yes. I, I've got a lot of Ch Chagall and Paul Clay ah. uh, and Moreau and that, that whole era to me, mm -hmm. you know, is really interesting to me, uh, yeah. image-wise. Um, and I want to thank Allison for, she, I haven't seen her in many, many years, but uh -huh. she, she was. Right, and, and I was also interested in, um, she served me breakfast in red. <laughs> That's a cute yeah. one. <laughs> I've, got, I've got puns here and there, and mm -hmm. uh, at times I think that's kind of, you know, again, poetically, right. it's too easy almost, but that one worked yeah. to me. So honest. you should know we have about five minutes, and your I poems no are short, but let's have poetry, poetry. Okay. Uh, okay, the ones, you're, you're, the ones you really want out there. Uh, let me go for a political poem, just because I have that part of me in it, mm -hmm. uh, of some sort or another, that uh, called Revolution, question mark, question mark, question mark. The last garden they planted was prickly and difficult. Tomatoes that looked like loons, strawberries dripping with oil. The earth was parched despite torrents of rain. The world spins round and round, yet nothing falls and nothing's found. There can be no revolution without black negligees. Shout if you must, but learn to whisper too. There can be no revolution without question marks. The world spins round and round, yet nothing falls and nothing's found. I'm going to wash my face in cold ash and bitter tea and aim for that space where everything penetrates and my body levitates above the fractured light. The world spins round and round, yet nothing falls and nothing's found. Ah, it's like a song. It has a refrain. Give me a guitar and I'll Yes. Are learn you a musician as well? No. Oh, no. I'm not. Okay. I actually tried to be one for a brief time with, a, uh -huh. with someone's guitar and I, I go, no, I think I'll... I'll, I'll <laughs> now, were you, were you making these poems early on, or did you take on the mantle of poet later? Um, I was always a writer of some sort, uh -huh. and I, I was a journalist in high school, uh -huh. which a lot of people I know, you know, paper, you know, the paper. And, yeah. I was, and I was good at it, I think, in some levels, but it bored me after a while, uh -huh. and I really wanted to be more creative with it. Mm -hmm. and, but I also went through many periods where I just didn't, didn't know what to write, and, and I didn't see it as being a career. I didn't see myself as being that disciplined, so I was, mm -hmm. so I would do, I learned computers and word processing and stuff like yeah. that. So I ended up going back to writing at different times, and just the, really the last 10 years, I've been, but I'm, that's where the books came from. Yes. And yet that first, my, an early poem that I didn't read, but it's very similar to the first one I read, the family poem, uh -huh. um, goes back about 20 years, and that oh. was kind of like, like, oh, I think I can do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. did you have any training in poetry? Did you take any courses, or did it just... I certainly <laughs> took courses. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm, I'm more influenced, I think, by, by songs and, 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 uh -huh. and Leonard Cohen and Bob Dylan. Yep, and, uh, see, I, I heard it, I heard yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and their imagery, and, uh -huh. and I find that I mean, I'm learning more about poetry as uh, as people, you know, tell me yeah. more about different poets and stuff like that. And there's a vast world out there that I don't know much yes. about. But I think that I, you know, a lot of me is influenced by my song. Yes, and, good. Um, well, yeah. let's have let's have um, one more. One more. This is it. This is your swan song on this program, at least. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's so scary to pick the I know. last poem. Oh, well, this will be. I'm going to read this one. Okay. Uh, pretend I'm, a, pretend I'm, I'm rapping, which I don't know anything about rapping. <laughs> okay, gender rap. Heels so high, touch the sky, today I fly. I'm the ambassador of drag, ain't afraid to brag. If you haven't heard, I'm spreading the word. I say tomato and I say tomato. They tell, they'll tell us you're either a guy or a gal. Oh my, my, that's such a lie. If you ask them why, they say it's God's will which gives me a chill. I've had my fill of such ignorant swill. Don't they know God's one of us? She's so fabulous, absolutely marvelous, outrageously androgynous. Man or woman, it's all an illusion, a complete delusion. That's my conclusion. Do I suffer from gender dysphoria? No, I exalt in gender euphoria. 
This society's got a case of gender either or you. Yeah. <laughs> Won't dress your boy in pink, afraid of what the neighbors will think. You should see a shrink for making such a stink about the color pink. When are we going to come to our senses, break down the fences? Enough of this repression. It's time for transgression and creative expression. One day this away, one day that away. Or mix and match. That's the catch. It's so natural, supernatural. Yes, I say tomato and I say tomato. And you say it wonderfully. And you oh, just you. summed everything up just at the very nick of time. Thank you so much, Andy Plum, a.k.a. Selena Ann. Thank you very much.